Ambassador Richard Murphy joining me today, his former Assistant Secretary of State. Uh, Mr. Murphy, uh, good evening. Good evening. We are expecting a visit between Erdogan and uh, Biden or a meeting that's going to happen next week. We know that right now Mr. Erdogan is facing his lowest ever poll numbers and record low values for the Turkish lira, which may make him more open to compromise. What do you expect from this uh, meeting? I'm sorry, but I don't feel have a good sense of what's coming up in that meeting. Uh, um, Biden has, has said relatively little. I don't know that he's mentioned the upcoming talks at all, but uh, it's an exploratory meeting, I think, on both sides. Neither one uh, knows the other well. Mm. So, uh, so, what about uh, the the priority for Biden administration to toward the Middle East? Do you think now, after the um, war in Gaza, we are the Middle East now is taking a prime primer uh, situation in the new administration right now? I don't think I'd call it primary. Uh, it's a, you know it's a constant concern for any American administration. But this administration is dealing with issues, I would say priority in the Far East, in East Asia, the relations with China uh, being foremost. So I don't, I don't, I would not rate it as a primary concern. Mm -hmm. uh, Your Excellency, it's been six months that Biden is in the White House. There is no visit for the Gulf. Uh, for any, um, uh, at least for uh, yani, uh, the Department of State, uh, Blinken, there is no announcement for any visit right now. What does it mean? I think he's still settling into the job and uh, it's, it's been a steady concern for the Department of State over the years. It'll be no less a concern for, uh, for Secretary Blinken. Mm. So um, I, d I don't have any real sense of how he will handle the meetings. He'll, he'll be in a listening mode, in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. How do you think now the relationship is between USA, Saudi Arabia, and UAE? Uh, you are expert in the Middle East, and you were for a long time you, you, were, you served there. So what is your advice for this administration to deal with these two countries? How do to, they have to deal with, with them? Well, to listen carefully to them. Their concerns are real and uh, life-threatening, you might say, or regime-threatening in uh, several areas. So I think one bit of advice would be listen sympathetically to their views of the area and uh, discuss how we can bring our positions closer together. Mm. Uh, if you're going to go back to the um, uh, Israeli election, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Bibi Netanyahu, says Israel is witnessing great election fraud. Do you agree on that? I think he's, he's, he's worried about his own future. Um, he's got, uh, he, he faces a number of issues with uh, investigations of uh, his, his own conduct in office. And I, this, I shouldn't be saying it outright, but it may be an effort to distract attention from how he's handling uh, Israel's problems with the Israeli-American relations. Hmm. Do you think that Biden administration will stand with bennett Lapid uh, government or alliance? Oh, it, it, it will be supportive, certainly. Um, you know, the relationship is secure, is deep, and... Um, I, I don't foresee any rupture in any way of uh, the basic relationship. I'm mm -hmm. sure 
will work, they'll be seeking an accommodation. Uh, Your Excellency, do you think that Iran is was uh, interfering in the U.S. election, especially now there is uh, a new um, subject that comes out uh, saying that Jamal Abdi was the second highest donor who individually raised at least $100,000 for Biden-Harris presidential campaign and affiliated joint fundraising committees. And everybody know who is Jamal Abdi. He's, he's pro-Iranian, the right now, the regime, the Iranian regime. Well, it's made its positions pretty clear. Uh, it's got a very limited capacity to interfere mm. uh, or to influence their outcome. Uh, Iran's not a very popular party in uh, American political circles. Mm. Okay, oh, we know that Iran uh, backed militia in Iraq feel increasingly emboldened to attack various targets and even US forces. Do you think that Biden's policy of Tehran appeasement leads to chaos, conflicts, and carnage? I don't think he's interested in a conflict with Iran. Hmm. Uh, to some degree, as yes, a degree, Iran itself seems to be seeking the irritation, uh, seeking to find issues to be irritated about as a diversion from its, uh, its other problems. But I certainly don't think that the United States is seeking problems with Iran. Your Excellency, do you think that the, the negotiation in Vienna between USA, indirectly, between US and Iran, will end w with a result that serves the benefits of the American people? I hope so. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's potentially a, a, a very important relationship in the region and on a global basis. So I'm, I hope that uh, we can find ways to uh, work out a better accommodation of our policies and our, our views. We don't wish ill on Iran. Uh, so I I look for happier days, certainly, uh, and a better understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, Houthis are wagging economic warfare against Yemen and are not taking any precautions to spare civilians, even the children. Why, the question is, why the Biden administration and the international community remain silent on this? I think it's an admission that they don't have any good answers for dealing with the Houthis. Uh, and so you, the silence, I would interpret as, uh, you know, not wanting to put a foot wrong that would complicate the issues, but not quite sure where the Houthis can, can be uh, uh, directed, you can be nudged. Um, we have great sympathy uh, with the Saudi uh, efforts to come to better terms, and we encourage those uh, in our bilateral dealings with the Saudis. Uh, but uh, we don't want to complicate which the issues which are already very tense uh, between Riyadh and, and the Houthis. Mm -hmm. Do you think, Your Excellency, that uh, now uh, Palestine and Israel in, in Biden uh, era will, will find a, a peace process? It's going to be tough. Mm. It's going to be very tough to find that, uh, to, to build a vigorous peace process. Uh, um, we will we'll be looking to do so. I'm sure, and I'm, I'm not current on uh, what the nature of our contacts is, but it's very much in America's interest that there, uh, any issues be resolved peaceably uh, involving the Saudis and, uh, and their critics, such as the Houthis. Mm -hmm. Do you think terrorism in the Middle East uh, has stopped? No, no, I, th I don't think so. I think uh, 
in the unsettled political atmosphere, such as the Middle East continues to be, that uh, those who are looking for ways and means to redirect it, to destroy the current uh, that they disagree with will, will prevail for now. It's, it's, no, there's, no, there's no end in sight for me. Uh, do you think that the USA have a strategy to deal with uh, Iran proxies like Hezbollah, Hashd al-Shaabi uh, in Iraq and Houthis in Yemen? It's not, it's not clear what uh, the strategy is to strengthen the uh, structures of the uh, official governments or the authorities in, in Baghdad as in uh, Riyadh was, would be policy. But um, exactly how that's going to work out, it's very difficult to foresee. Mm -hmm. USA uh, announced uh, a military aid to Lebanon, to the, to the army, Lebanese army. Do you think that the American aid for the Lebanese army is going to lead to reduce the influence of Hezbollah in Lebanon? That would be our hope. Um, a united Lebanese military authority, uh, I don't think it'll be in a position to take over the Lebanese government, but uh, to strengthen the existing civilian authority uh, is, is very much needed. And uh, we, will, we will certainly do what we can as outsiders from our distance to help it along. Mm -hmm. Uh, Your Excellency, why do you think that MBS, Mohammed bin Salman, is a persona non grata uh, in the USA? As you know, I think, I don't know if it's true that President Biden refused to talk to him. He said, my relationship going to be with the king, uh, uh, protocol-wise. I don't know if it's that correct. Um, that's a safe position. Uh, we've had, uh, obviously, some uh, difficulties with uh, MBS, but uh, and get along, have gotten along well with the king. So I, I think to say we'll continue our to strengthen what we can of relationships with the king it does not exclude working for a better uh, cooperation with uh, MBS, uh, but. I think the difficulties and disagreements are not a surprise and they're bound to continue. Uh, what do you think about Abraham Accord signed by the United Arab Emirates and the role of <laughs> MBZ, uh, Mohammed bin Zayed in uh, peace agenda, of his agenda of tolerance and peace? Well, the, the aim of the, the Abraham Accord is certainly one that uh, has found a welcome in Washington. Uh, you know, there's only so much the outsider can, can do to shape uh, those relationships. They each have their particular character, but uh, we're, certainly, we're certainly supportive of uh, a better tie between the uh, countries involved. Uh, Your Excellency, finally, do you think that uh, the, uh, this administration is focusing or concerned uh, about uh, the, the inside prob problems in USA rather than the foreign uh, policy? Yes, I, I think it is. Uh, it's not looking for trouble outside the country and uh, will try to play a cons constructive role internationally, but it's its energies are focused domestically at this present time. Mm -hmm. um, Richard Murphy, thank you, dear Ambassador, for being with me. Um, I'm so glad to have you again in my show, former Assistant Secretary of State. Uh, thank you so much. My great pleasure. Very nice to see you. Thank you.